Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, with our ongoing series on business research methodology, today we are going to talk on research designs. We are going to discuss what actually research design are and how the research are designed. Uh, friends, for this discussion, we have once again with us in our studios, Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is a principal in Sri Aurobindo Evening College, University of Delhi. Dr. Rajput is a prolific professor who believes in giving most of her knowledge most of her experiences to the students she has immense experience she has authored numerous books and number of articles have been published in reputed journals too so uh, friends before welcoming dr namita rashput once again we would like to tell you all that if you want to ask questions from dr rashput then you can call right in the cc studio you can contact us through our toll free number our number is 18001010430 let's welcome our guest dr namita rashput and let's Let's try to understand what research designs are. Hello, ma'am. Welcome to the lecture. Good morning, friends. Today we'll be talking on the basics of research designs, the types of research designs, and the basics of and insights of research designs. Now, research design is a set of advanced decisions that you make up to master plan specifying the methods and procedures for collecting and analyzing the needed information. so basically there are number of methods to conduct research so it is the master plan of how you are going to initiate on the topic of research which you are taking and taking it forward in terms of objectives and other factors so it is basically uh, the advanced decisions on the basis of which the other parameters will be depending upon so it is the base uh, for your uh, conducting the research work so it's a set of advanced decisions that make up the master plan specifying the methods and procedures for collecting and analyzing the needed information now basically there are numerous methods of collecting the data which was uh, the topic of the last lecture that is the data of method uh, data collection we have primary sources we have secondary sources so once we are uh, uh, with the information that is the data which has already been collected the next step is to make a research design and uh, basically the the data which has already been collected so now it is the time to analyze the data and analyzes the needed information uh, to make up uh, for the future plans of the researcher now what is a research dear friends uh, we are going to understand more and more on today's topic and if you have any queries then you can contact us through our toll free number and talk to dr namita rajput you can ask questions our toll free number is 18001010430 today we are talking on a very interesting topic that is research mm -hmm. designs and uh, uh, this uh, topic is beneficial for all the students who are uh, studying under different uh, heads because uh, research has uh, uh, its uh, own criteria and this criteria followed by all the researchers in the respective area so we would like uh, dr namita rajput to continue further and give us a deep insight into today's topic so we are uh, discussing the research designs the research design as i said is a set of uh, the advanced decisions that are make up the master plan specifying the methods and the procedures for collecting and analyzing the needed information now in the last topic we discussed uh, how the data is to be collected so we discussed on two methods the primary method and the secondary method of the data collection so once we are uh, thorough about the data uh, whether we use the primary sources or we are using the secondary sources now is the time and the main analysis of the data and the information which is already been collected so you know there is a procedure for uh, you know uh, you know culminating everything which you have uh, started upon we have to add upon all the data which has been collected we have to assimilate the information together and basically the final crux is on the analysis of the information and this is the most important step of the research design that whatever research design you take up uh, will decide upon how the information is to be assimilated how it is to be collected and how it is to be analyzed so these are the basics of the research designs that is it gives you a master plan of how the data which has already been collected now is the time to analyze the data in a particular manner now it is very important uh, for all of us to understand that why is a research design important now a good research design is the first rule of good research that is 
if the design is faulty or there are errors in the research designs, then whatever you do will be multiplied by zero. So you have to be very cautious, very, very cautious in terms of selecting your research design because this is the first rule of the good research work. So if the research design which you, you know, select is okay, then the other parameters, the other steps and the subsequent steps will also be okay. So if you take a first step right, the all subsequent steps will also be right. And if you take the faulty and the wrong uh, designs uh, steps, then of course the subsequent uh, research which you will do will also be wrong. Now is the time uh, to understand more about the research design that why it is important for a researcher. The knowledge of the needed research design allows the advanced planning so that the project may be conducted in less time and typically at a cost saving due to efficiencies gained in the pre-planning. Now basically uh, the knowledge of the needed research designs is very important. Sometimes the researchers are unaware of which research design is the most suitable to their research question. So first of all, uh, to my understanding, a researcher must understand, uh, you know, without applying the research designs, the various types of research designs so that he can, you know, you know, culminate and uh, the information together. He can relate his research question to a particular research design so that there are no errors and there are no faults in terms of the selection of the research design because this is the primarily the most important at the basic condition and the results of the output and analysis and the implications are dependent upon the right kind of a research design. So uh, the knowledge as far as the research design is concerned is uh, should be there with the researcher. This is number one so that he is able to take less time and uh, re less efforts and energy to put in uh, the right kind of research design to his research question. So this will not even help in saving the time with this will also help in saving the time energy and efforts and of course the uh, the efficiencies would be gained and inefficiencies would be removed if uh, this is the step which he follows and uh, without any kind of a problem so the basic understanding of the research uh, designs is should be a prerequisite for any researcher to apply the research method as far as possible now coming on to uh, another important topic which is called as the objectives of research design anything which you do if you do without objective, it is of no use. So you first have to find out the objective of the research design. That is what a particular research design is important uh, for the researcher to be applied. Uh, first is to gain background information and to develop the hypothesis. To measure the state of a variable of interest, to test the hypothesis that specify between the two or more variables. So here we are talking the insights of objectives of research designs. Of course, uh, anything which you do, they have certain ends to meet. They have certain objectives to fulfill. So what is the objective of selection of the research design is very important for a uh, researcher to understand. First is that uh, to have the backdrop information that what is the information is, uh, you know, on the side of it, on the backdrop of it after having a deep knowledge of the backdrop of the information, now is the time for developing the hypothesis. Now I must say that unless and until a researcher has a complete knowledge about a topic, the right and the left kind of knowledge, the, the basics of the knowledge of the topic which he has chosen, he will not be able to formulate the objectives, he will not be able to have the right kind of hypothesis. Insufficient information can lead to faulty hypothesis designing. Hypothesis is all about you take certain assumptions that uh, there is a, you know, a significant relationship uh, of one variable with the other or not or is there any other issues relating to it. So as far as the objectives of research design is concerned, you have to first understand the basics of the topic which you are uh, choosing uh, for the research design uh, for the research topic. Then of course you have to culminate uh, the literature review or the information which is already there in the market so that you have a basics of uh, uh, and a complete backdrop of the information which you are moving. The path you will move now will be smooth because you have a complete knowledge about what is happening in relation to one type of activity. And uh, of course when you are thorough with the type of information which you are talking about now is the time to develop the hypothesis. 
Hypothesis is a set of assumptions and there are two types of hypothesis, a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. When you talk about the null hypothesis, you negate a relationship and the statement of a null hypothesis would be that there is no significant relationship of x and y. I mean, this is just an example I am giving you. Whereas, alternative hypothesis gives you a positive perspective of the research question that is there is a positive and a significant relationship of variable x with variable y. So, once you are thorough with the, uh, the knowledge, the backdrop, now is the time to formulate the hypothesis as I said and then is of course to measure and state the variable of interest. Now, there is one thing which you should be very clear about that there are certain uh, you know topics which are measurable, there are certain topics which are not measurable. So, the topics which are more measurable is a quantitative in nature whereas, the topics which are not measurable is qualitative in nature. The research question can differ from one point to another point that is it could be quantitative and it could be qualitative. So, if the question is about the quantitative there are no problems similarly like for example, you are trying to find out the rise in the prices in terms of the stock performance. So, you have the closing prices, the opening prices, the middle prices of the stock market with you. Similarly, you have the performance of the stock market which is also measurable in sales volume or turnover of uh, the company. So, these are the things which are very apparent uh, in nature which are very clearly shown. You just have to apply one or two econometric techniques in this regard and of course, the econometric techniques which you apply will automatically conclude the, uh, the hypothesis which you have taken that is uh, if there is changes in the market conditions, it would always be easier for understanding the relationship. But the problem comes when the research question which you are trying to measure is qualitative. Here the art of research is more uh, in case of qualitative rather than quantitative because you have to find out certain measures to find out and make a variable out of it and then of course, you can apply the quantitative methods. So, first maybe you have to transform the data, you have to normalize the data, you have to you know put certain techniques to make it measurable and once you are thorough with the, uh, the measuring technique, then of course, the uh, finding out of the hypothesis, the testing of the hypothesis becomes easier for you. So, uh, finally, uh, like you have accepted about the topic number one, you have researched about the information which has already been done number two, you are able to develop the right kind of hypothesis maybe null or an alternative hypothesis three. For you are able to have a state of measurability of the variables which you are trying to test. For now is the time to test the hypothesis which specifies the relationship between two or more than two variables, right? So, this is what uh, and these are the steps which you have to carry on. But uh, when you are formulating the research problem, when you are formulating the research designs, it is very, very important to have certain cautious steps because the more cautious you are, the more accurate the results of the research would be. So, the research design, there is a caution in relation to this first. In many cases, research is an iterative process. By conducting one research project, we learn that we may need additional research which may result in using a multiple research designs. So, these are the two things which you have to you know very well understand. First, the process which you adopt as a researcher, you cannot be uh, associated with this kind of uh, perspective in your mind that whatever you do, once you do, it is conducted. As the name suggests, research means an iterative process. So, you have to be very energetic, you have to uh, really keep your uh, spirits very high that maybe in the first time you are not able to find out the results, maybe in the second time you will be able to find out the results. So, that is why we say that the research is an iterative process, it is a number of times you have to repeat the activities. Number two is that you have to uh, have to have an additional research also which may result in using a multiple research design. Now, see there is one thing which I want to uh, add here that when we start with the research, the perspective is different the hypothesis is different and as and when we move on with the journey of research, the things change, the perspective change, the connotations change. So, maybe you have to revisit everything, 
maybe you have to revise your objectives, maybe you have to change with the thought process which you are already into, maybe you have to change your hypothesis, maybe you have to change your perspective, maybe you have to change your objectives. So, maybe the whole process is repeated uh, very very soon because uh, you started with uh, some kind of uh, expectation that this is uh, how it is, it is going to be working upon, how it is going to be worked upon. But as in when you move on with the research, you understand that this is what is not you, your cup of tea or maybe this is not the topic which is uh, acceptable to you. So, everything is new again. So, this is what is uh, most important worrying thing about a research design that as in when we move on, maybe we have to change everything, maybe we have to change the perspective, uh, the variables, the technology, uh, the, the methodology and the perspective and could be uh, the set of data also, uh, could be the change of the population set also, could be a change in the sample also. So, you have to be very prepared in terms of all these perspective in mind. Now, coming on to what are the features of a good research design? A research design appropriate for a particular research problem usually involves the following features. Let us have a look on this. First, the mean of obtaining the information, the availability and the skills of the researcher and his staff, the objective of a problem to be studied, the nature of the problem to be studied and the availability of the time and the money for the research work. So, there are certain important things which you have to understand here that as and when you move on with a good research, piece of good research work. You have to have certain things in mind and that is what we call it as the features of a good research design. First is that what is the deep knowledge of a researcher? How is he uh, acquainted about the research design? What kind of skill sets he has in mind? Whether he is able to culminate everything, analyze everything or not? If not, whether he has a staff to uh, get on with the additional research work or not. Then of course, uh, what is the availability of the time and the money because these are the limiting factors for the research. If you have more time, you will be very leisure in your work. If you are doing a research piece of research work which is time based, of course, you have to, you know, uh, uh, expedite everything in terms of coming on to the research results. So, all these factors, uh, you know, make a research work good. So, that is why we call it as a features of a good research design. Now, moving it forward, there are three types of research designs. One, exploratory, two, descriptive and three, causal. So, there are basically three types of research designs and uh, and majorly we can categorize into three categories, exploratory, descriptive and causal. We will be explaining them one by one. The first is exploratory research. It is usually conducted at the outset of a research project. It is usually conducted when the researcher does not know about any kind of a problem. We are having certain purpose for explaining a exploratory research design. The purpose is about diagnosing a situation, screening the alternatives, discovering the new ideas, producing the hypothesis, what it does not do. Now, there are certain uses of exploratory research. First, you have to gain back the information, you have to define the terms, you have to clarify the problems and hypothesis and you have to establish the research priorities. So, let me catch up with the, uh, with the concepts again. Now, as I understand that when you talk about a research which is exploratory in nature, the researcher is unaware of the, uh, the problems, he does not know because he is doing it for the first time. So, it is usually conducted when he does not have any idea about the problems which he is starting with the concept. Uh, the, the purpose of exploring the research is maybe you want to find out actually what is the situation. So, diagnosing the situation could be one perspective and one purpose of doing the exploratory research. Then of course, uh, you have to find out uh, and screen the alternatives uh, which are available for the researcher. Then of course, uh, you have to discover the new ideas about it. You have to then produce the hypothesis because this is the exploratory research. So, you do not know 
uh, and you do not have the base for any kind of the earlier research. So now is the time to make the hypothesis uh, accordingly and uh, what is not there is also a part of the exploratory research. So we have talked about the purpose of exploratory research in terms of first the diagnostic of problem, number two screening of alternatives, discovering the new ideas and lastly produce the hypothesis whether they are there or not. Now uh, every research design has its uses, has a deep meaning, has a different uh, application. The things which are preliminary in nature which you do not know how the situation is going to be, you do not know about the basics of the research, they are the best type of a research design which you can use is exploratory in nature. Uh, you will be able to gain back the information relating to it. You will be able to have the definite terms relating to what you are going to start. You are able to have a clarity on the problem and the hypothesis which you are forming. And of course, you will be able to establish the research priorities. That is how you are going to move upon in the journey of research. Now we talk about the types of exploratory research. It is a literature search. It could be in-depth interview, it could be a focus group. So when you talk about the types of uh, uh, literature search, this is the first step. That is you try to find out what has already been done in the, uh, in the past. Then of course the in-depth interview will talk about with whom you are going to interview, what are the basic advantages and the disadvantages. <coughs> what is the focus group? That is what it is, advantages and disadvantages of taking into consideration the research exploratory methods. Now coming on to exploratory research methods uh, because we are this is the first research design out of the three which we are explaining right now. The secondary data analysis first the process of searching for interpreting existing information relevant to the research topic. The experience survey refer to gathering the information from those to be knowledgeable on the issues relevant to the research problem. The key informant techniques gathering information from those thought to be knowledgeable on the issues relevant to the problem and the lead user survey used to acquire information from lead user to a new technology. Now explaining about the exploratory research methods we have uh, another methods called case analysis and the focus group. In the case analysis a review of available information about the former situation that has a same similar to the current research problem is done. This is a very uh, good method of a research technology in terms of uh, the exploratory research methods that is the first type of research design. Number two is your focus groups. This is a small group together brought together guided by a moderator through an unstructured spontaneous discussions for the purpose of gaining information relevant to the research problem. Now let us have a look uh, on the exploratory research further. The case analysis we have already done then is the ethnography projective techniques. The projective techniques are very important to understand. First world association test, sentence completion method, role playing technique, thematic appreciation test, cartoon test, picture frustration. Now see uh, this is a type of a research which has never been done, which is pioneer in nature. So there are very good and excellent methods available so that on the first outset whatever you discover is excellent, your analysis is good and you will be able to find out the clarity in terms of the objectives and the methods of research designs. So these are uh, projective techniques which we are you know looking at this is very very important in this regard. The first is the world association test, the sentence uh, completion methods, the role playing techniques, thematic appreciation test, cartoon test and the picture frustration. These are uh, the descriptive exploratory survey designs. You collect the data on the status quo, determine the differences between the variables, try to find out ethnographic aspects, try to find out the thematic uh, you know appreciation, uh, you, the cartoons are shown and uh, you, are, you try to analyze the things and of course the picture frustration is there. So all these methods they help in uh, the exploratory designs. 
Now we have a descriptive research. This is the second type of uh, the research design which we are talking about. The descriptive research is undertaken to describe the answers to the question of who, what, where, when and how. It is desirable when we wish to project a study's findings to a larger population if the study's sample is a representative sample. So in this uh, research design, we are trying to explain uh, the issues about who is what, what is what, where, when and how. So these are the things uh, which are very, very important for the descriptive research design. So here uh, it is desirable when we wish to project a study finding to a larger population if the study sample is a representative sample. So these are the conditions under which we will be putting on the descriptive research. Now coming on to the purpose of descriptive research, the first is your purpose, describes the characteristics of a group, determine the proportion of a people who act a certain way, make predictions, determine the relationship between the variables etc. So when you are talking about uh, the descriptive research design, you have to be very particular about the purpose for which you are undertaking the research because you are describing what, how, when, whom and for what aspects you are doing your research. Then is of course you determine uh, the proportion of the people who act a certain way, you have to make predictions accordingly and of course uh, you will be able to determine the relationship between the various variables. So we will be now talking on the different research designs, the study, designs, observation, experimental. The study designs of the descriptive are of two types, observational and experimental. Observation is of two type, descriptive, analytical. Experiment is again of two type, RCT and non-RCT. Descriptive is of again two types, case report, case series. Analytical is of two types, cross-sectional study and case con control study and the cohort. Now coming on to the descriptive research classifications, the cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies, the statistics to test hypothesis and your patients. Uh, these are the research designs that is the cross-sectional and the longitudinal, they are the part and parcel of the descriptive research classifications. Now the descriptive research classifications, uh, uh, as I said, there are two types, the cross-sectional and longitudinal, so we will be explaining them one by one. The cross-sectional studies, as the name suggests. It measures the unit from a sample of a population at only one point of time, that is a snapshot. Not over a period of time, but at a point of time. The sample surveys are cross-sectional studies whose samples are drawn in a way to be representative of a specific population. These studies are usually presented with a margin of error. The kids who do not wear sunglasses and the kids who wear sunglasses. This is a kind of a cross-sectional uh, quasi-experimental research which is in front of you. The second type uh, of a descriptive research study is a longitudinal study. Repeatedly measures, the longitudinal research studies repeatedly measures the same sample units of a population over time. Since they involve multiple measurements over time, they are often called as the movies of the population. So when you talk about the descriptive research design, there are two types. The first uh, you know, type is a cross-sectional in which you try to measure the sample population at a point of time. This is a snapshot. Whereas the difference between the, uh, this cross-sectional and the longitudinal design is that in the longitudinal design, you try and measure the sample units of a population over time again and again. So that is why we call it as a movie of the population. So perhaps these are the two methods, the cross-sectional and the longitudinal studies. They are very important uh, part of the descriptive research studies and they are very important to analyze uh, the further aspects of it. So overall, uh, the descriptive research studies, uh, it is a continuous panel and a discontinuous panel also. In the descriptive research studies, the continuous panel, you have to ask the panel members the same question on each panel measurement. Discontinuous panels, the very questions from one panel to another panel. These are sometimes referred to as omnibus panels. Omnibus means including or covering many things or classes. 
So overall, uh, this is a very good, uh, important uh, discussion. Uh, now we talk about the discontinuous panels. They are demographically matched to some larger entity implying representatives and the discontinuous panels represents a source of information that may be quickly accessed for a wide variety of purpose. Whereas in the continuous panels, uh, there is a brand switching studies and the market tracking studies. The brand switching studies examine how many customers uh, switch brands, whereas the market ranking strategy, those measures some variables of interest such as market share or uh, the unit uh, over a period of time. So we have talked about uh, the various types of research designs. of research designs two have already talked but let me have a recap of what we did exploratory descriptive and causal now these are the three primarily the most important research designs across the globe on the basis of which the research activities are carried on in the exploratory research designs uh, this is usually conducted on the outside of the research projects and it is conducted by the researcher uh, by the concept that he does not know anything about the problems the purpose is diagnosing a, a situation, screening alternatives, discovering the new ideas, produce the hypothesis and what is what it does not do. So there are certain uses of exploratory research designs that is gaining the information back, defining the terms, clarity on the problems and the hypothesis and of course you establish a research priority out of it. Now the coming on to the exploratory research, there are uh, types, uh, the literature review that is the first step, in-depth interview could be the second and the focus groups could be the third. So uh, in uh, of course the in-depth interviews with whom advantages and disadvantages and whereas in the focus group what it is advantages and disadvantages. Now exploratory research methods, uh, it is the secondary data analysis which we do like the process of searching for interpreting existing information relevant to the research topic. Uh, experience uh, surveys refer to gathering information from those to be knowledgeable on the issues relevant to the research problem. The key informant techniques gathering information from those who thought to be knowledgeable on the issues relevant to the problem. The lead user survey used to acquire information from the lead users to a new technology. Now exploratory research methods uh, they also include the case analysis and the focus groups. The case analysis is a review of available information about the former situation that has some similarities to the current research problem. The focus groups is all about small groups uh, brought together and guided by a moderator through an unstructured spontaneous discussion for the purpose of gaining information relevant to the research problem. Now coming on to the exploratory research designs, uh, we have a case uh, analysis, we have ethnography, we have projective techniques. That is the word association test, sentence completion methods, role playing techniques, thematic appreciation test, cartoon test, picture frustration. So when you talk about the descriptive research, the descriptive research is undertaken to describe the answers to the question of what, how, whom, where and how. It is desirable when we wish to project a study finding to a larger population and if the study's sample is a representative sample. 
The descriptive methods uh, has a purpose that is describing the characteristics of a group, determining the proportion of the people, make predictions and make relationship with the variables. It is of two types, cross-sectional and longitudinal. In the cross-sectional, we measure the units from a sample of a population at a point of time and we also call it as a snapshot, whereas the sample survey are cross-sectional studies whose samples are drawn in such a way so that they are the representatives of a specific population. These studies are usually presented with a margin of error because sometimes the sample which you choose uh, uh, must be having some kind of uh, faulty or errors. So it is better to take the margin of errors in this case. In case of the longitudinal studies, repeatedly measures the same, uh, the same sample units of a population over time. Uh, since they involve the multiple measures over time, they are often described as the movies of the population. Now, continuous uh, panels and the discontinuous panels, they are the descriptive research studies. In the continuous panels, you ask the members the same question on the each panel measurement from the same. Discontinuous panels, the questions vary from one panel measurement to the next. These are sometimes referred to as the omnibus panels and the omnibus panels including and covering many things or the classes. When you talk about the discontinuous panels, they are demographically matched to some larger entity implying the representatives. The discontinuous panels represent the sources of information that may be quickly accessed for a wide variety of purpose. Now in case of the continuous panels, uh, we have brand switching, we have market tracking studies because uh, in this you have to continuously track the information. So in case of the brand switching panels, the study is examining how many customers they switch brands. Market tracking strategies, those that measure some variables of interest such as market share or a unit sales over a time. The results of, uh, you know, they are in front of you. This is an example of a famous Amos Pepridate farm, Nebisco and the total families. So when you do this, this is cross-sectional 1 and the other is a cross-sectional 2. The question is which brand of choco chip cookie did you most recently purchase? So you are talking to a different uh, brand, you are talking about a different brand, you are talking to a different population. So these are uh, example of a cross-sectional data. Now the third most important research design nowadays which is used across the globe is a causal research. It is basically uh, you are trying to understand a phenomena in terms of the conditional statements of if x then y, if y then x or vice versa. The causal relationship are often determined by the use of experiments. The causal research as you can see on the slide, it has a purpose, does a change in x cause a change in y, experiments, laboratory experiments, field experiments are important and vital aspects of the causal research. We will be taking them one by one. The first is experimental. The experiment is defined as an act of manipulating an independent variable to see how it affects a dependent variable while also controlling the effects of additional extravenous variable. Now what are independent variables? What are dependent variables? In the experiments you try and control uh, certain situations, uh, you manipulate the, the things so that you are able to find out exactly what kind of uh, impact is there on the independent variable because of the dependent variables. So now it is important to understand what is an IV that is independent variable and what is DV that is dependent variable. So let me start with the concept of independent variable. Independent variable are those variables that the researcher has control over and wishes to manipulate. That is the four P's of marketing. Example, price, <coughs> product, promotion and placement. The examples are the levels of ad expenditure, types of ad appeals, display location, methods of compensating salesperson price and type of products. Now while explaining the concept of uh, independent variables, here I am give, taking an example of a marketing research. 
The independent variables here I have taken as an example is a four P's of marketing. The first P is the, uh, the product, the second P is the price, the third is the promotion and the last is the placement. These are the four things which uh, the researcher has a control over that is he can go in for any product, he can go in for any promotion technique, he can go in for any price mix uh, or a product mix and of course he can sell it in any market. So these are the independent variables. Now you try and see the effect on these IVs by DVs. So you change the concepts of uh, dependent variables, in, uh, you change the concepts of independent variables in which because you have a complete control. So what is the impact on the dependent variable? So we are trying to have uh, this kind of uh, aspects. Now coming on to a concept called dependent variable. Dependent variable are those that we have little or no direct control but a strong interest in changing. So we like for example I want to see the impact of changes in the prices on the quantity demanded. The price is a independent variable and the quantity demanded is a dependent variable. When you talk about the dependent variable, the control of the researcher on the dependent variable is very, very less. They have no direct control because whatever are the changes which are taking place in the independent variables which have a direct bearing and impact on the dependent variables. Now there is a concept called extraneous variables. Extraneous variables are those variables that may have some effect on a dependent variable yet are not dependent variables. As the name suggests, extraneous variables are those variables that may have some effect on a dependent variable yet are not independent variables. So they are somewhere in between the dependent and the independent variable. Now coming on to uh, another concept called experimental design. Experimental design is a procedure for devising an experimental setting such that a change in a dependent variable may be attributed solely to the change in an independent variable. So this is a, a kind of a design in which we do experiments. We by uh, accessing and adopting a procedure for devising an experimental such as change in a dependent variable may be attributed solely to a change in the independent variable. So you are tr just trying to manipulate and trying to test the concepts. Now coming on to the basic symbols which are used in the experimental design, let us have a look on this. If you see an oval shape, this is a measurement or observation of a dependent variable. If you see x, it is a manipulation or a change of the independent variable. If you see r, it is a random assignment of subjects to experimental and control groups. If you see E, it is the experimental effect change in the dependent due to change in independent variable. Now we have a concept of pre-test and a post-test. The pre-test refers to the measurement of a dependent variable taken prior to changing the independent variable that is uh, the concept which is done pre-testing. Now we have a concept of post-testing also. It refers to measurement of the dependent variable after changing the independent variable. So there is a pre-test, there is a post-test in uh, the experimental design. In the pre-test, uh, uh, you know, the basic measurement of uh, the dependent variable taken prior to changes in the independent variable, that is what is the position before and what is the position after. Now coming on to the experimental research design, it is a true experimental design which isolates the effect of a dependent variable on the dependent variable while controlling for effects of any extraneous variables. Next we have quasi experimental designs, ones that do not properly control for the effects of extraneous variables on our dependent variables. Now in terms of the experimental designs, before, after, with control group is most important design. It may be achieved by randomly dividing the subjects of an experiment in two groups, the control group and the experimental group. Now in terms of the experimental design, 
what is a control group and what is the experimental group is most important. The control group as the name suggests it is the control of extraneous variables typically achieved by the use of a second group of subjects. In terms of experimental group the group that has been exposed to a change in the independent variables. How valid are the experiments is most important question. An experiment is valid if the following are true. The observed change in dependent variable is due to independent variable. The results of experiment apply to the real world outside the experimental setting. Now, there are certain preconditions, there are certain connotations and pretext in mind before applying the experimental designs. The experimental designs if they are put into, it is very important to understand whether uh, I mean these things are true or not. Whether the observed change in the dependent variable is due to the independent variable, you have to actually find out the reasons why. That is, if actually there is a change in the uh, dependent variable is because of change in the independent variable. This is most important to understand and this should be true. And of course, whether the experimental design which you are opting for uh, are you know applicable to the real world or not. Now how valid are experiments? There are two forms of validity which are used the validity of an experiment, internal validity and external validity. Internal validity is concerned with extent to which the change in dependent variable is actually due to the change in independent variable. External validity refers to the extent that the relationship observed between the independent and dependent variable during the experiment is generalizable to the real world. So, let me explain you this in detail. Now, as far as the uh, implementation, application and validity of the experiments are concerned, there are important uh, validity issues which we have to scrutinize. Now when you talk about validity, we have again two types, internal as well as external. The internal validity is concerned with the extent to which the change in dependent variable is actually due to change in the independent variable and the external validity refers to the extent that the relationship observed between the independent and dependent variable during the experiment is generalizable to the real world. Now whenever you are conceptualizing the research, you have to be very particular in terms of whether the, the, uh, the concept which you are talking about is very near to the real world or not. Now we are coming on to the types of experiments, laboratory experiments. Laboratory experiments are those in which independent variable is manipulated and measures of dependent variables are taken in a contrived artificial setting for a purpose of controlling and many experiment extravenous variables that may affect the dependent variables. So in the laboratory experiments you control everything, you manipulate everything so that you are able to measure exactly that what is the impact on the dependent variable because of the changes which you have contrived in the dependent variable. Now coming on to the types of experiments, first is a field experiment. Field experiments are those in which the independent variables are manipulated and the measurements of the dependent variables are made on test units in their natural settings. We can see this uh, experimental design here. Experimental research design is a pre-test post-test control group designs randomly selected experimental groups that is a pre-test and a post-test, randomly selected control group that is a pre-test and a post-test. So there is a treatment. So here we are trying to test a position before and after and we are trying to find out whether they are actually close to the real world or not. So these are the things which we have to talk about on the, uh, the research designs etc. So now in the last uh, uh, five ten minutes let me give you a complete uh, aspects of what we did today. We started with the concept of a research design. Now as I said research design is a kind of a master plan on the basis of which you the, the other part of research is dependent upon. So it is a set of advanced decision that make up the master plan specifying the methods and procedures for collecting and analyzing the needed information. 
Now, why is the research design important for us? The good research design is the first rule of good research. Knowledge of the needed research design allows advanced planning so that the project may be conducted in less time and typically at a low cost due to efficiencies gained in the pre-planning. Now, of course, when you talk about a research design, there are certain objectives to it to gain background information, to measure the state of interest, to test the hypothesis and the relationship between two or more variables. We started with a research design that there are certain cautious steps which we have to keep in mind. First is it is an iterative process so uh, the researcher they should not leave their courage because sometimes after doing the research or in the process of research road maybe you have to do everything again it's a kind of re 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 doing it could be uh, you know formulating your objective once again etc. Then we talked about three types of research designs. They are most important and acceptable across the globe, exploratory, descriptive and causal. In the exploratory research, we are trying to conduct uh, the research problems which are never done before. So it is about uh, knowing a problem for the first time. So the objective could be uh, the diagnosis of the problem, why it happened, when it happened, how it happened. Then of course discovering the new ideas and then of course formulating the hypothesis that once you know about the situation, once you have collected the information, now is the time to make the hypothesis and uh, the clarity on the issues of the research designs. So there are certain uses of course of the research, exploratory research design that you have to gain back the information, you have to define the terms, you have to be very clear uh, about the problem and hypothesis and you have to establish the research priorities. Now the research, exploratory research, uh, there are types, the literature research that is the first step, in-depth interview is the second, focus group is the third. So in the literature, uh, the first step is about a research literature search that is you try and find out what has already been done in India and abroad in terms of collecting of the information. Number two, you try and find out the in-depth interview in terms of with whom, advantage and disadvantage. And the focus group you have to find out what it is, advantages and the disadvantages of doing it. In terms of the exploratory uh, research methods, the research data analysis, experience surveys, key informational techniques and the lead user survey is done. When you talk about the exploratory research methods, the case analysis, the focus groups they are quite vital and meaningful because in the research analysis, uh, review of available information is done about a former situation that has some similarities with the current situation. Whereas in the focus groups, the small groups brought together are guided by a moderator through an unstructured spontaneous discussion for the purpose of gaining information relevant to the research problem. Now we talked about uh, certain more important and pertinent methods relating to research, uh, exploratory research methods. What is the uh, ethnography aspects, uh, you have certain projective techniques that is the world association test, sentence completion methods, role playing methods, thematic appreciation test, cartoon test and the picture frustration. So these are most vital things which you have to talk about. In the descriptive research, uh, it is undertaken to whom, uh, what, how, where and when and it is desirable when we wish to project a study's findings to a larger population if the study sample is a representative sample. Now coming on to a descriptive research design, uh, as the name suggests, it has a purpose uh, that is you describe the characteristics of a group, you determine the proportion of the people, you make predictions and of course then you determine the relationship between the variables and the further factors. It is of two types, cross-sectional and longitudinal. In the cross-sectional, it measures uh, from a sample of the population at only one point of time, that is it gives you a snapshot. Whereas in the sample survey are cross-sectional studies where the samples are drawn in such a way as to be representative of a specific population. These studies are usually presented uh, as I said earlier also with a margin of error because sometimes uh, the sample which you select is faulty and maybe not a true representative sample of the, uh, of the research. Then we talk about the longitudinal research designs. In the longitudinal research design, it repeatedly measures the same sample units of a population over time. And since they involve uh, the multiple measurements over time, they are also called as the movies of the population because you are trying to measure it uh, once again and again and again. Now coming, on, com coming back to the descriptive research studies, we have continuous panel and we have a discontinuous panel. In the continuous panel, uh, the panel members are asked the same questions on each panel measurement so that everyone uh, has the same pretext, same questionnaire. 
in the discontinuous panels the questions vary from one panel measurement to the other me measurement so in terms of the discontinuous panels these are sometimes referred to as the omni bus panels that is the omnibus panels including or covering many things or classes whereas in a discontinuous panels the discontinuous panels are demographically matched to some larger entity implying the representatives discontinuous panels represent the sources of information that may be quickly accessed for a wide variety of the purpose in continuous panel uh, it is very important uh, for uh, marketing strategies for example you have to brand switching studies uh, you have to measure you have to find out the market tracking studies so in this case the continuous panels are needed in the brand switching studies the studies examining how many customers they switch brands in the market tra tracking strategies those that measure some variables of interest such as the market share or uh, market sale over time so you know these are the examples and now the last uh, part of this lecture that is the causal research we have, which we have already talked about i'm just giving a recap in the causal uh, we may be thought of a understanding of a phenomena in terms of conditional statements of the form if x then y the causal relationship are often determined by a use of experiments it has a purpose does the changes in x cause a change in y the experiments exploratory experiments and the field experiments the experiments is a kind of a act in defining and manipulating an independent variable to see how it affects the dependent variable while also controlling the effects of the additional extraneous variables in the independent variable the independent variables are those variables that the researcher has control over and wishes to manipulate that is the four p's of marketing product price promotion and placement this is an example which i gave as far as the independent variables are concerned and examples of the levels of advertisement type of ad appeal display methods of uh, sales person price and the type of the products dependent variables are those variables that we have little or no direct control so whatever are the changes which take place in the independent variables they may have a direct uh, spillover on to the uh, the dependent variables also then we have extraneous variables which are in between the ivs and the dvs that is independent variables and the dependent variables in the extraneous variables are those variables that may have some effect on a dependent variable yet they are not dependent variable experimental designs uh, we talk about uh, is a set of devising an experimental setting uh, that a change in the dependent variable may be attributed solely to the change in the independent variables let us see the symbols we have oval we have x we have r and we have e o means uh, the measurement or observation of a dependent variable x is a manipulation or a change of the independent variable r is a random assignment and e is the experimental design then you try and find out uh, when you are implementing the experimental design the pre and the post scenario you know, what is the impact uh, before implementing the research and what is the uh, example of you know after the concept is introduced so the true experimental research designs isolates the effects of independent variable on to the dependent variable and then we have a quasi experimental design that do not properly control uh, for the effects of extraneous variables on to this so when you talk about the experimental designs we have two aspects to be kept in mind that is the before after with the control groups that is the control group and the experimental groups now the experimental groups uh, as i said uh, in the experimental design we have two aspects to be studied in depth that is the control group and the experimental group the control group uh, uh, control of extraneous variables typically achieved by the use of a second group of uh, subjects experimental group the group that has been exposed to a change in the independent variables now when you are uh, making uh, the validity of the experiments you have to be uh, very true about two things first observed change in dependent variable is due to observed change in the independent variable and number 2 it is close to the real world because if these two things are not uh, you know find out then of course uh, the uh, the acceptance of this design is under question mark then we talked about the validity issues internal and external and we have certain experimental designs we have certain field experiments which are a vital part of the experimental designs With this note, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a productive session, dear friends. If you want to give your feedback for this particular lecture, then do write to us at info. cc at nic. in. Your feedbacks, your suggestions, as well as your queries are welcome. We would be meeting again very soon and would be discussing on another topic under the series business research methods. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much.